Well, hello there, YouTube. Nosejob here, and quite frankly, I've had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. All right, so we're back in the um, in the place doing the stuff and the things with the redstones and the theories. All right, this time, um, well, the first video was like a complete noob tutorial, and um, if you are a complete noob to redstone, go check it out. But now we're going to be actually getting into the theory, and uh, this, in case you missed it the first time, wires only conduct up to um, 15 blocks. I don't know why I added that there now that I think about it, but it it's there, so yeah. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to start talking about is conduction. And that is just um, how the redstone power, yeah, let's just call it that, or signal, that's how it's conducted. And that's just done through uh, redstone wiring, which is the placed version of dust. And, okay, so... Redstone dust can obviously conduct with uh, tiles adjacent to it, but it can also conduct up and down diagonally in this uh, step-like fashion. And one of the things that really made no sense to me when I first started redstone, and to be honest it still makes absolutely no sense, is this right here. That is one block of distance. So if you have uh, 15 steps going up, of dust, uh, the power will go all the way up that without the signal needing to be repeated, which yeah, it makes no sense because you think, oh, that's one meter up, one meter over, that's two meters there, but it it just doesn't work like that. It's a good thing though, because uh, that means you can get your signal out farther. Now, um, another thing I touched over there is a solid block will cut off this. Um, conduction here. You see this right here is uh, more or less separating these wires and uh, that, that can actually be pretty useful. Now you see a transparent block like this glass here and uh, there are other transparent blocks such as ice, um, slabs, stairs, a uh, whole bunch of other things I can't think of right now. I believe fences but anyways, there's a lot. Um, in terms of redstone, these are pretty much just treated like air. Like this, more or less, is not here. It allows you to have a um, actual block there without it affecting the circuit. And uh, one popular use I can think of, or right, say you have um, something in the ground that uses mine carts in some sort of circuit, and you don't want animals getting down there and uh, jumping in the carts, and messing stuff up, uh, let's just let's just pretend this is ground here, and then it comes up out of there, and you have your um, mine carts doing whatever they are. You don't want a chicken to come in here and hop in the mine cart because they will go faster with entities in them, and that can mess certain things up. So that's one use for that. That's a really basic use, but you know it's it's there. <coughs> All right, um, this is kind of my uh, segue into reception here. Um, Alright, dust can connect to certain blocks. It doesn't actually um, connect to, you know, your generic solid block. As you can see here, um, a corner piece like this or a straight line will not connect to something beside it. But if it's leading straight into a block, it will turn it into a receiver and that's what this is right here and that's why the uh, piston is extended but I'll talk a little bit more about that later and uh, that's just there to repeat the signal don't worry about it um, dust can connect like I was talking about it can connect to certain tiles like uh, these repeaters here it will connect to the output or input of a repeater but it will not connect to the sides because that's pointless, but it it's also pointless to um 
connect to the output. I'm not sure why they do that. I guess just as a uh, graphical thing because it looks better. That's really the only thing I can think of. But um, if you played the older versions of Minecraft, if you uh, had this after release and clear your cache, you'll see that this does not work. You have to have a straight line like this leading into a repeater or else it just won't power it. And it was a huge pain. I had uh, built some things back then and it it was not exactly um, fun. Alright, now we're going to start talking about reception and before I do, I don't, if you haven't seen the first video, I want to point this out that uh, torches are natural inverters so that is why this is on and when it receives power it is off. Alright, reception. So, um, any block like this right here that um, is receiving direct power from a conductor like this, it will uh, it will become a receiver and will take this signal and store it. As you can see, um, receivers will not power wiring. You need an emitter for that. And um, you see, repeaters, their input acts as a receiver and it can actually receive from receivers. I'm saying that word way too much. But um, that's that's how reception works. So you can make you know nifty little receiver receiver chains like this and there I go again. And it's also an uh, emitter and I'll talk more about that later. And uh, once again this was the other example of reception. And um, Oh, this is getting into detection. I, I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. That's not for another couple thingies. All right. Um, we'll we'll talk about what's going on here in a little bit. And uh, what do we have over here? Well, remember how I said that um, a block would only receive the signal if dust was facing directly into it. Well, there is one um, exclusion to that rule, and that is a dot of dust which will connect to everything around it. It connects in all four directions anyways. So if I flip this lever, you'll see that it's connecting to all four of these blocks, turning these torches off, and also powering the uh, repeaters drawing from these receiver blocks. So that's, that's for the most part how uh, reception works. And I'm not going to get too insanely deep into this. I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter. But this this yeah, this is looking like it's gonna be a long one. Alright, and now on to a mission. Uh you remember what we had there where the block received the power. Well this is a little different. You'll see we have a repeater here and this actually can turn a block in front of it into an emitter. It's an emitter itself and so is a uh solid block that it's connected to. So you can see, a um, simple way to think of it is it's pushing this signal through the block. So you know, over here on this side, on top of it, on that side, even under it, will uh, receive power because emitters will power wiring. And now you can see the repeater here as a uh, receiver once again. <coughs> and um, all right, what do we got here? Oh yes, torches. Torches are also emitters slash receivers, um, sort of. They're not, they don't receive um, a signal from wiring directly. They will connect to wiring though, and that's another one of those pointless things, but they do. And so you'll see here um, any adjacent tiles because one thing I'd like to point out, even though this looks really thin, it still takes up this entire block of space here. So just imagine it being a uh, full solid block there. So it will power that down there. And uh, these up here. But it doesn't directly um, emit this way. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. I flip switch. I don't know why. Alright, as you can see here, um, this block is in front of it just like this. 
but it isn't emitting power through this block. And um, that's just another quirk of torches, which is a good thing, because you could really mess up some uh, circuits and wouldn't be able to get things as compact. But you see, if I place a block up here, oh, what is this? Well, you see, a torch can only turn a solid block into an emitter if it's above the torch. So you'll see now that this piece of dust is on. If I put one up here, it will be on. Yada yada, etc., etc. And that's just uh, what this is an example of right here. And uh, this doesn't really have an effect. It's just uh, getting rid of the little visual thing there so you can see that both... Uh, dots of dust are being powered independently. Moving on from the um, emission here, <coughs> excuse me, we have detection. And um, basically that's any device that can, um, that will react to redstone in some certain fashion, like uh, doors, pistons, dispensers, uh, in a future update, fence gates, stuff like that. And uh, so you'll see here that anything directly adjacent to the piston will activate it. Like this on each side, top, bottom, you know, it'll, it'll work no matter what. Now here's um, something interesting. Alright, you see we have this dispenser here. You power it. Yay, cake. But, uh, if you look over here, we're powering this dispenser, and oh, look at that. All four of them shot out a cake. Now, uh, the deal with this is detectors like, uh, pistons, yada yada, etc., dispensers, they, um, what they do is they react to a redstone related update they will um, they will also react to receivers as you can see with this because blocks under dust will act as receivers powering it this is not being directly powered by dust none of the uh, blocks activating this are and so you can see that example over there but you see um, whenever you lead dust directly into it this block itself will act as a receiver and these ones will react to it and um, if you notice pistons they do not do that and that's because a piston is actually a transparent block so you may be thinking wait I thought you couldn't power a transparent block well that's true the thing that's happening here is it's simply reacting to uh, this redstone update here, it's saying there is a block in my um, adjacent areas that is powered by redstone, so I'm going to extend. But these over here, these are solid blocks, and if you can see that if you watch the uh, repeaters behind, you can see the signal going through. But these, uh, not not so much. I'll just show you. Um, little example here while I'm at it. Here we have the classic stair step. And you can you can even see the graphics are going right through it. And it will still power the piston, but it will also go straight under it. Uh that's so that's um an interesting little quirk, I guess you could say. And, um, yeah, I think I'm going to be able to get this video shorter than I thought. Okay, so, completely spaced off there for a second. Uh, pistons, I know they have an extra, I guess you could say, layer of detection, an extra detection range, and that would be in this area, but I'm not going to be getting into block update detectors and things like that until, um, I do a video exclusively on piston logic, which will, um, it'll probably be the next one. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, yeah, so just keep a lookout for that. Um, this is basically it for uh, 
basic redstone items, the things you're going to use the most. That is, that is mostly the rundown on the theory of it. Uh, I'm going to start getting into uh, logic that's specific to um, actual circuitry rather than the underlying mechanics of redstone itself, the true mechanics as people call it. So thanks, thanks for watching. Um, tell me if I can improve anything. I think I did a lot better on this video than the last rambling 20 minutes of whatever it was. And uh, thanks, and I'll see you next time.